On Larry King Now, the cast of Silicon Valley, T.J. Miller, Zach Woods, Martin Starr, and Kumail Najiani. A show that starts about tech jargon with a lot of language people don't understand is a hit. How do you explain that? Basically, if you cross-platform multiple and integral mediums, then the masses have multiple inceptuals, they call them. But when I used the inceptuals, it didn't work that way. <laughs> I mean, even though the specifics are foreign to people, the idea of sort of a bunch of underdogs is fairly relatable. I hear that the pilot wasn't terrific, right? Oh. Who told you that? Was it me? Yeah, Martin told that. me he wasn't crazy about it. <laughs> Plus, a quiz on some real-life Silicon Valley stars. Who is no, Jonah Peretti? Oh, oh, I, I know, know who that, that is. is. Creator of BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed. Correct. Damn it. Who is Jack Dorsey? I know him. He's been in my house. You Jack got that Dorsey. one. Famous oh, trombonist. Larry King's friend. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Joining me today, the stars of the hit new HBO comedy Silicon Valley, T.J. Miller, Zach Woods, Martin Starr, and Kumail Nanjiani. Silicon Valley is satire about the tech world and a group of guys working to make their fledgling startup a success. The show comes to the mind of the great Mike Judge, who also brought the world office space and Beavis and Butthead. Silicon Valley airs Sundays at 10 p.m. on HBO. It's been an instant hit. Explain something to me. We'll start with you, T.J. A show that starts about tech jargon with a lot of language people don't understand is a hit. How do you explain that? I mean, it's going to take a lot of tech jargon to explain it to you. Basically, if you cross-platform multiple and integral mediums, uh, such as digital like HBO Go, and you're also sort of trying to backtrack and system architecture in terms of the entertainment that you're putting forth onto the public, then the masses have multiple inceptuals, they call them, where they can sort of have an inception of what the show is from various different but, mediums. But when I used the inceptuals, it didn't work that way. <laughs> I, mean, I, had to, I mixed up that in nuptials once. That's what I mean. uh, let's go to the normal person, Zach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not a bit the Why question. does it work? That's well, I stand by what he said about the conception. <laughs> Back him up. Uh, I, think, uh, I think it's because it's the, that even though the specifics are foreign to people, the idea of sort of a bunch of underdogs is fairly relatable. It's, the, it's about a, you know, a tech startup where they're trying to sort of make their way in an environment where there's all these sort of much bigger, more powerful players, and they're kind of socially awkward. They're underdogs both... Uh, entrepreneurially and personally. They're perfect for the time. Yeah. Right? yeah. That is the four of you plus another guy, right? Yeah, Thomas mm -hmm. Middleditch, who plays the protagonist who comes up with this algorithm that is a, a billion dollar idea. And I think also people are ready for exposition in comedy or thick enough narrative because, like, Game of Thrones is so popular, Breaking Bad, all these shows that are popular are dramas that have very thick like exposition and narrative and story that you have to learn all these magical quests and islands and all these dragon names. But it's funny. But the this one's funny, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the the, people are up for that, I think, now. Martin, why? give me the concept of why this group of guys turns down much more money and takes a lot less money for a smaller piece. Well, uh, according to my character, I don't get it. I feel like <laughs> we should have taken the money, but... Uh, I mean, really, you have an opportunity to grow your own idea. When you care that much about something and have created something on your own, you want to see it flourish and be behind its growth, as opposed to selling it to something uh, much greater that doesn't care about how it's developed and what it's used for. Did you like it right away when you saw it, Kumail, the plot, when you saw the script? Yeah, I mean, like uh, Zach was saying, the idea of sort of underdogs taking on a big corporation, you know, it's the most relatable thing. Everyone always feels like they're fighting for something that they can't get. Uh, and that's really what this show is about, so I really sort of connected to that. I hear that the pilot wasn't terrific, right? Oh. Who told you that? Was it me? Because I did everything. I thought it was all. No, Martin, very yeah, yeah, press yeah. Martin told that. me he wasn't crazy about it. <laughs> <laughs> Thrown under the bus. Oh, my God, Martin. Martin. Um, I think, you um, know, I think that what we realized was that the story was more about, or at least what they realized, I should say, because we're just in the show. Um, but 
they, they realized that we needed to be, it needed to be more about these guys and the funny dynamic between these, you know, among these guys. So they probably had to tweak it. It is hard to do a show about something that you have to teach everybody yeah. all about the inside yeah. jokes and then ask them to get the inside jokes. <laughs> but they, they hired four very likable people and me. It's just that guy couldn't make it, so I'm here. <laughs> so it comes down. Let me get this. I, I, I think I wanna, the biggest wanna... problem with the pilot was that it didn't have any Kid Rock in it. And then mm -hmm. we reshot yeah. it. That's, that was the main difference. To add a bunch of Kid Rock in it. And I think that really put it the over the top. The series has got more Kid Rock than any other series on television. Right K now. Pay cable, right now. cable, or at network. The, at the moment. Kid Rock. They thought about adding Slipknot. They were yeah. going to do a lot of Slipknot Kid, stuff Kid Rock is sort of, what? he's the white trash Eminem if Jay-Z was the Lil Wayne of Drake's. I got it. I get it. Let me, uh... <laughs> TJ gets it. <laughs> These people were perfectly cast, weren't they? <laughs> um, let me read what this is about. Uh, this was given to me by the HBO people. Oh, let's see what it's Silicon called. Valley is centered around the product you're all working on. It's called Pied Piper, described as a multi-platform technology based on a proprietary universal compression algorithm that has consistently fielded high Wiseman scores that are not merely competitive, but approach the theoretical limit of loose of uh, looseless compression. I would have gone for the ten million. <laughs> <laughs> Do any of you know what a universal compression is? Yes. Yeah. Do I you think Camille know does what, more. Well, Camille knows the most because he is a, still a programmer. Do you know what a Weissman score is? I do now from the show. Yeah, we do. But I actually, what is a Weissman score? It's basically, do you really want me to tell you? It's intensely boring, Larry King. No, then don't what tell it, me. Is it? <laughs> Suppress it. <laughs> okay. Larry, let me put it this way. It's like I'm wearing suspenders, but I'm still wearing a belt. Does that make sense? Have you That's heard that saying? That's really weird. Have you, have you heard that saying? You don't do that. Why? You, well, you, you know that old saying. He's got suspenders on, but he always wears a belt. It's like that. that you want to tighten the belt notches universally. How old is that I thing? get it. Yeah. This is nerds. Yeah, that's exactly right. Boy, it took me a while to figure it out. These are nerds. Were you all working actors or comics? Give a little background. What were you doing? I was doing a lot of stand-up, and I had done some acting stuff. Uh, this is my first sort of, like, big, biggish one. What but were you yeah, doing, Martin? Uh, I've been acting for 15 years or so in, in L.A., and, and uh, I've been lucky to be a part of a number of things that I'm proud of, this included. You, Zach? I've done a little TV and I just did a lot of improv comedy. Larry, I've, I can't believe that I'm actually sweating to tell you this, but I was, <laughs> I was, excuse me. Sorry. Take it, that's your stage. Yeah, I was, uh, I was the star of the major motion picture Yogi Bear 3D, uh, which is the most important piece of talking bear comedy in American <laughs> cinema, at least, in the, I, I think globally, but certainly in the United States. I played Ranger Jones. So I had that, you reach a point in your career that is the pinnacle, and then you hope that you land off on something like yeah. this, yeah. When were you released? When was I released? <laughs> <laughs> Yogi Bear was released in December. <laughs> it was released in 1999 from Denver, Colorado. Um, more with the cast well, no, of Silicon a, Valley after this. This is a lot of fun. Stay with us. <laughs> We're back with the terrific cast of Silicon Valley. Are you fans of Mike Judge? Huge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Iconic. Yeah. 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 I also think another reason people maybe would like it is because it's smart. It's people who are funny, funny, who are smart and funny, as opposed to just like doofuses getting into capers or whatever. Easy. Yeah. Don't look at me immediately after you're saying the doofus thing. <laughs> just sloppy doofuses. <laughs> <laughs> sweating, sweating, sweating. We're also all incredibly handsome, so that doesn't Sexual matter, right? I think, I think yeah. also it's a very, it's, it's very why. American. You know, it is this idea of starting your own business, having something that is yours, building it up, making it, pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. All those things are things that these guys have decided to do, whether or not they smoke weed and have no sense of personal space or, you know, fashion taste, it doesn't matter. They all <laughs> care about sort of making something and becoming important and making their mark in American history, which, you know, more and more is going to be about tech culture. Uh, one thing, is the product in a box? Is a, What does the product look like? No, it doesn't the, look like anything. Uh, it's sort of... We never see the product? Well, it's, it's a program. Yeah, so yeah. Would, yeah. So it's all it digital, really. It's yeah, a it's, digital program. It's a yeah. compression algorithm. So like a compression algorithm is to media as like jerky is to meat, right? It it shrinks it. it <laughs> it's, yeah, but no, then you add true. water and it grows up again. Yeah, yeah, and there's teriyaki, but also it grows up again. <laughs> I'm no, losing I, this, folks. I think, <laughs> I think that the right. lossless compression is okay. just um, <laughs> it's like Adobe Flash. I get or it. The secret of hosting a show after all these years is to never let the show get away from you. 
But at late in my career, why not? Who cares? The show's gotten away from me. Uh, it's being just controlled the by them. Right. Zach, you have said. Wow. Have we That's exciting. Someone? No, I love this. <laughs> Zach, you said I would, wouldn't consider myself a nerd as much as a supernova of sexual charisma. Correct. Um, what, what does that mean? Uh, I mean, I just think it's just like white hot eroticism radiates <laughs> for me, and it's something I've had from as as long as I can remember. And uh, it's you've always had that. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. It makes people uncomfortable because they they have a hard time hearing what I'm saying because they're just reacting to my body and my musk and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of, uh, indo what is it, pheromones? Pheromones, a lot of things. Yeah, that's what happens. People, pheromones. Yeah, you can squeegee my sweat off of me and put it in a bottle. It's a love and potion. It's, it's, it's essentially, yeah, it's... Should, I'm it's beginning to worry that I'm starting to understand this. <laughs> uh, TJ, your character is a pothead, Steve Jobs wannabe. Is it true you study Seth Rogen and Wiz Khalifa to prepare for the work? <laughs> <laughs> that is what? true. And I was going to say, if you could squeegee my sweat off, I, it would be... Um, you know, appropriate for me to be on television. Uh, and you share you know, I do. strips of your beard <laughs> I, I, come off? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the, I, I'm, I let it grow out completely, but there are two sort of, he's, or my character has two strips that are shaved right here, so it's mutton chops and also a goatee with full neck beard extension on both the right and, but on both the right and left and the center. And then, yeah, Wiz Khalifa and Seth Rogen are very driven uh, marijuana users. And I found that it was helpful to sort of review their work, listen to Wiz's music, Wiz's. Hear, listen to <laughs> Seth's music, which a lot of people don't know. You hung out with the both of them. I didn't. Then neither of them would answer calls, emails, <laughs> or any type of mediator to change. I think Who it was, is, uh, wasn't compressed. Who's the most tech savvy of the four of you? Really? Kumail. 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 Yeah. Look at his face. He knows Java. Who is the least tech literate? Oh. Okay. Ooh, yeah, it might be oh, Zach. Oh, yeah. He still has a flip phone. Who's most like his character? Who's the most well cast? <laughs> <laughs> Just that arrogant, to totally unaware uh, blowhard of a man. Do you break each other up during takes? Do you break each other up a lot? Yeah, 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 we laugh a lot on set. It's, that's one of the fun things is that we, all of us had been friends even before we started shooting the show. Uh, so we all had, we all knew each other. It wasn't it a couple weeks in when Mike was like, oh, you guys have really bonded. And I was like, no, I've known most of these guys for 10 years. Well, you, you have known each other. We've, we knew each other for over 10 years because we both started as stand-up comics in Chicago. And Thomas also was in Chicago. And I used to do a two-man improv show with Thomas for years and years, so we've known each other for 10 years. I knew him through mutual friends. Yeah, for a few years I'd known him. I knew Thomas. Improv, I know you guys do. You yeah. are, your characters, I'm told, are hilariously awkward around the opposite sex. Thank you. Is this part of real life for you? Oh, Martin's a player. Yeah, definitely. No. What awkward. are you talking about? What do you mean? This is a. Uh, I'm his alter ego. I'm like the. Okay, I'm, all right. I'm Superman. Clark Kent to his Superman <laughs> when it comes to women. Who's married? This one. So uh, you're married? To no, the he's game. not. Yeah, to the no, game. No, he's married no, to the game. Is. But he's are not you married. married or are not? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm to, trying to understand. What's your wife's comedy. name? Kate, K8. The letter K and then the number eight is her name. <laughs> She's a program. She's in Los Angeles. I'm serious. She's a computer program. <laughs> I wanted to, oh, I'm sorry. I'm the first one to announce an engagement on Larry King now. You were married? Yeah, to an actual human being <laughs> who also knows she's married to me. So what's that's her name? what's different. Okay, you said what's her name? Yeah. Emily. Emily. Nice normal name. Yeah. Are <laughs> yes, uh, you are single, Martin? <laughs> we wanted yeah. to have one normal yeah. name in the house. You're happily single? I'm t I'm very busy with work at the moment, so it's uh you are a real nerd, right? Thank you. And <laughs> actually, Martin's probably the least. thrown out compliments. Yeah. Martin so. and TJ are the least nerdy. Martin's not very nerdy at all. I Martin's should. jacked. Martin's so. really, really. Look at this. Looks out, guys. Well, okay. Zach, you can't be married, right? Because you're too sexual. Yeah. <laughs> Right, yeah. so he you, needs to just go yeah, out. It's and a buffet. It's basically yeah. it's, it's, it's a sexual system yeah. in yeah. my life where I'm just a scoop of this, a scoop of that. Yeah. Are you now starting to get recognized? Are you now you go on the street and people know you now? Yeah. What is fame like for you? Terrifying, empty. For me, what's it like? What's it like? What's it like for you, Larry? Well, I've had it for so long. Yeah. <laughs> what do people say to you when they see you on and the street? Is it different in Miami? Miami? They always call you by your first name. Yeah. On Johnny Carson used to, I would talk to him a long time about this. Mm -hmm. If you're in the movies, mm -hmm. if you're in a movie star, they back away and they sort of call you by your last name. If you're on television, they lean forward and call you by your first name <laughs> because they're intimate. Yeah. It's an intimate and they setting. see you every week and they see it for free. Yeah. That's, That's right. One of these guys was given the title of Sexiest Man Alive in 2013. We'll talk about life pre-silly...
One of these guys was the... <laughs> we'll talk about that when we come back. Uh, back with the stars of Silicon Valley, the HBO hit. You guys are not yet household names. Who will be the first of you to become enormously famous? People have been coming up to me for months and telling me they love me on Big Bang Theory, so in a way. <laughs> You're great on that show, buddy. Yeah, I am. I did love your new special, though. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the, who among you is ready for stardom? Ready for stardom. Because you're an ensemble cast. Are you ever ready for stardom? I don't think anybody is. Yeah. Harry, were you ready for stardom? No, no one is ever ready. It's a poor, poor choice of words. Well, who was, who was named the sexiest man alive? Kumail. He actually was. This is, you okay, guys think it's a bit. What? In what? Slate it was magazine. Just, it was just one really important website. What, what, that, what site is it? Slate. Salon. Slate? Salon. Oh, Salon. 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 Salon, that's not a, that's is not a hair small. website? It's a young that's woman, Slate.com. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Salon. How did you com. feel when they named you that? I don't know, I felt confused. <laughs> How did um, Emily feel? How did Emily uh, feel? She didn't buy it. She thought I was lying. <laughs> My mom called me and said, I read about the article where they named you the most S. You read she about the She said S, article, the most S. But read about the article. Yeah, she didn't even read the article. She read about the article. They had to airbrush the picture on the website to sort of sell it, but. <laughs> Do you tell the cast you were fired? I told, I don't think I told you guys A few times you've done it, yeah. I, yeah, I've, I, I tend to be a bit of a prankster on the set, Larry. I actually told, Zach, that his entire family had exploded. That's they, they, they were in a. That's funny to you. Well, it wasn't to me, but I thought it would be to him. But it wasn't to him. He's so our we George. We learned Clooney. those lessons, Larry, and then we, you know, he we, does. We, he does go overboard with the pranks. He does How our, did you take that, Zach? When, well, some of my family had actually uh, exploded. exploded. Not when he told me about it, but years before. So it was. So you were like, I did not <laughs> know. To be fair to me, you were like, you, why does this keep are happening? Are you comedians first, actors second? Yes. All of you first. No. I'm not, I, I, I'm an actor. Martin was in the first thing that Judd created, which no. is Freaks and Geeks. Uh, yeah. I don't know if that was the first thing. It was you were in awesome Freaks and Geeks? Yeah, he was, yeah. The, he was the one, best of, the, part of, he was one of the geeks. I would say the best. He was were you great. a freak or a geek? I was a geek. Bill Haverchuk, one of the great TV characters. What's it like all you working together? Is, the, is it a happy cast? I mean, do you get along well with the director? There's a tenderness to it. <clears throat> There's a real tenderness to it. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'll uh, say, yeah, I think we, we're all we all get along really, really well, and you know, the obviously. scripts are really funny. And Mike is has been our like comedic hero, most of us for you know, years and years and years. So it really is sort of a dream job. I mean, mm -hmm. this is the best with possible the, with job. With the weird do. tech stuff, do you have trouble remembering lines? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Every once in a while. But it's great that we have like tech consultants on set so they help us figure anything out. Are you saying everything you say technically is true? Correct. Yeah. Yes. That's all I You have really? to get it yeah. right. As far as Just, the show goes, they're not putting on a belt unless they got suspenders on. Does that's that make correct. sense? Does it, do you uh, we, get have, it we have one sad note. You lost a cast member. <laughs> yes, correct. Yeah. Uh, Christopher Evan Welch, he played Peter Gregory. Was that not expect? Was he sick? Uh, it was a freak occurrence. He uh, had what a happened? Heart, heart attack in the middle of the night. The young man? He was 48. far too young for, for, for yeah. that. He had a happen. young daughter. He had been treated for cancer, I think, and then it maybe had some. How did they have to work around scenes? Uh, um, I mean, did they have him pass away on the show? No, no. they had to rewrite no. sort of the, they had to write him out of the script, and he was. I think we would all agree unanimously, the seriously, part, the funniest the best, part of the, the show. By far yeah, the best he's part the best of the best show. Who did he play? Uh, he played the guy who we go with when we agree to take money. Oh, he offers the less yeah. money. Yeah, Peter patients. Gregory was his name. And I remember when we were doing the first table reads, everyone, he, he was so, so funny. And so it's so sad, the scenes that, you know, uh, we read that we never got to shoot. That was some really, really... You know, mm. And it was so, so funny stuff. unintentionally. I mean, everything that he brought to that character was so intricate to that world and, and really, like, really created such a defined character that the comedy just flowed from it because that being that socially awkward and interesting, like, um, it, it's just all present. Uh, and you were like, we were, a lot of us have done comedy first and then sort of came to acting second. He did like Shakespeare in the Park. He yeah. was like a big time New York theater actor. Was and by far, by far, by far. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and then the first couple of table reads, I remember being so nervous. We were nervous and like, you know, loud and uh, sort of fumbling through our yeah. lines. And he was so precise and so like at his own pace, so confident. He has this he character like that sort of has a very strange cadence. And then when you go up and talk to him, the first time I spoke to him, I said, hi. Um, you know, I'm, I'm TJ, and he goes, oh, hey, man, how you doing? And so like, listen, what? we're in, and you go, wait, what? How did that affect the whole show? I mean, 
must have been hard to go on. It's not as funny sure. of a show. <laughs> it's the main thing. It was, it was tough. Like, for me, it felt hard to, like, try and be funny right so after So how do they, if he's the guy that put up the less money, and he's so part of the whole scene, yeah. how do they work it out? I mean, what happens to him? How do you... Sort of his presence is felt, and he's sort of around. We talk about him. Oh, you he's mention not... him as I if... I think he'll become like Charlie from Charlie's Angels. Like, he'll sort of be the voice. The he'll phone. be controlling things. Right, exactly. More with the cast of Silicon Valley after the break. We're back with the stars of Silicon Valley. A quiz on some real-life Silicon Valley stars. The winner will get a raise from Mike Judge. Who is <laughs> no. who is real raise? Who is Jonah study. Peretti? Oh, oh I, I know who that, that is. is. Creator of Buzzfeed. Buzzfeed. Correct. Damn who it. is Jack Dorsey? I know him. He's been in my house. Jack you got that Dorsey. one. Famous oh, trombonist. Larry King's friend. Yeah. <laughs> Twitter. He invented Twitter and uh, Square. Benjamin Ling. Mm -hmm. Who the hell knows that? <laughs> <laughs> Some social media questions. Dumb to dum dum. Via Twitter wants to know if there's any chance any of you would gay marry Guilfoyle to save him from deportation. Come on, guys. Not a... No. Yes, on, guys. now. Why? Yes, he would. Well, you've got so much sexuality. You have to find yes. different yes. bottles of sexuality. Right. Yes. Yeah. Don't talk him out of it. Are you, gay? Are you gay on the show? No. So what He's is it? He's Canadian. He's Canadian, so you to be natural. Same, same thing. Yeah, it's called. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think same-sex marriage. That whoever that guy is is a real dumb. What is it? Dumb, 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 dumb. He's dumb, appropriately dumb, named. Yes, okay. Exactly. That yeah. the flying Zeus tweets. Who actually knows the most about programming? Kumail. 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 It, it also, if you're racist, you would also be. <laughs> this is what you would guess. Yeah. No, no, but, yeah. but you would also be right. That's accurate. You would also be right. He knows Java. I did study. They are based on real. You have to learn everything. <laughs> There's a reason that stereotypes are based on me. Donald Sterling said it was you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. TJ at Preston Smith wants to know who your favorite historical character is. Historical character of Ooh. all time? Yeah. W.C. Fields, probably, I guess, or Friedrich Nietzsche. Uh, Amelia Earhart. She got lost over the Atlantic. She's interesting. She's mysterious. It is. I'm She's interested a, in her. I, I don't mean, know. I, it's I, on the I, spot. I think of all the famous people. Betsy in Ross. Story. Betsy Ross designed the flag. Amelia Earhart. Jack, you are a <laughs> um, sick women. Guy. <laughs> if you can tell that the sexuality just oozes, he has to <laughs> gravitate <laughs> towards women. Historical women. <laughs> I, have, I have dreams of seducing yeah. Elizabeth Cady Stanton and, and, Rosa, uh, Parks. and, and Rosa Parks and, <laughs> and taking the American flag off of <laughs> yeah, taking it off and wrapping her off. Harriet Tubman. This is John Adams, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Your favorite historical. Uh, uh, George Washington. Oh wow. Wow. What? Are, who's your favorite historical? Oh. Woman. Historical character. A historical time. character? Woman. Go woman. Mary Todd Lincoln. <laughs> Mary, Mary Todd, Todd Lincoln? Lincoln? Yeah. Yeah. Turned out to be a wacko. Yeah. yeah. Here's to choose. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Guys, Mary Todd. Uh, so Mary and Todd and Lincoln. B Vitamins on Instagram. What do you think about the comparisons to Entourage? Yeah. There. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, okay. You got it. I think the difference is in Entourage, things always worked out for them, and in our show, things kind of never work out for us. It's Zach good. at Sunset Capital yeah. wants to know if you like doing the Herald. What Pardon? is that? Oh, the Herald is an improv format. Yeah, that's yeah. an improv. Yeah, it's a. I find it constricting. What do you think? Yeah, I guess it can be a little constricting. At Wooders12 tweets, I think I have the next billion dollar app. Who should I talk to? Um, not us. Yeah. Eric Schmidt. <laughs> Eric Schmidt. Is Google. this really Here's the most the efficient way for you, to, for you to get your billion dollar idea out there? Just to ask via Larry <laughs> King, <laughs> via Twitter. Yeah. yeah. Actually, you guys. Yeah, us. I don't think it's a billion dollar idea. <laughs> <laughs> no. First of all. <laughs> it's a shot in the dark. Be a 40 idea. <laughs> we finished the show with a name, uh, with a, uh, it's called If You Only Knew. Who does the first girl you ever kissed? Um, Holly, now we really kissed or yeah. just kissed? Really yeah, that is a good question. Let me put it this That's way. With question. suspenders, Annabelle, or just a belt of suspenders? Because <laughs> it was Holly Matthews was the first French. How old was she? Uh, How old was she? She was, I think we were both in sixth grade. It was behind the bleachers. You French kissed her? You better believe it, Larry. <laughs> behind the bleachers where? Uh, in my elementary school. On the where mouth. was this? So was this? In Denver, Colorado. Why, are you trying to find your way back into my heart, Larry? You're already there. <laughs> Who's the first girl you ever kissed, Zach? Uh... It was just this morning. Who was it? <laughs> <laughs> he's been holding up. That's why he's so sexual, because he's been holding that sexual energy for so long. Uh, it was Becca Newell. 
Becca. I we uh, it was at a tenth grade dance, so yes. a good what tenth? That's six great. years <laughs> after you. <laughs> tenth and, gets, great. I know it wasn't great. Where so, was where, what city? In uh, Bucks County in Yardley, Pennsylvania, and it was at a dance, and there was some horrible. It was like uh, who would it have been? It would have been like DMX song playing, and I was behind her. We were dancing, and I craned with my horrible praying mantis neck around and had the most like abortive first kiss. It was really sad. And then I went out into the hallway, and there's smoke machines going on, and I had a minor crisis. Sorry I asked. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, first girl you ever kissed. I, I, uh, Natalie Groundlick was the first girl I ever Natalie wanted Groundlick. to kiss. Oh, wanted but to. It did, who but did, it, you, who uh, did you kiss? I actually don't remember, but a girl came up to me more recently uh, like in the last six years and told me that I, that I was her first kiss at a game of spin the bottle. Now she's a lesbian and just got married. So I don't know. I, maybe that's why I washed it from my mind is because I knew that it was not the best experience for so either of us. So we've asked this question a lot and this, so far this is the weirdest question I've heard. <laughs> Who did you first kiss? Well, I was raised in Pakistan where adultery is punishable by death. Uh, but I did kiss Miru on the cheek and it felt like a home run. It was. Wait a minute. Uh, Miru? In Pakistan, adultery is published by death, but what is a kiss public punished by if you're not married? Um, I don't know. I mean, so what's the point tradition? of kissing? What's the point of kissing if you're not going to have sex? Is well, that what you said to me? What was your first job, Zach? Uh, my first job was I played trumpet at parties. That's perfect. That is the most Zach life. What was yours, Martin? Uh, acting. That's where you guys yeah. are. Yeah, wow. What was yours? I cleaned dishes at a, the cafeteria. In Pakistan? No, in Iowa. <laughs> in we don't Iowa. clean our dishes in Pakistan. We just kind of <laughs> what was yours, eat TJ? Off the floor. Uh, I mowed lawns. This was my first job, but much later I was a hip hop clown for Latino families' birthday parties. Latino families? Just Latino only? families. That was our primary client base. Like There's a lot of Sierra's? African Americans, but there were no white families. What was your birthday song? Hmm? Did you have a hip hop birthday song? Yeah, but it was pre recorded. I just had to lip sync to it and juggle a little bit. If you weren't an actor, what would you be? A psychologist or a criminal? <laughs> or a criminal or psychologist? Both, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what would you be? Uh, like, yeah, I thought either a psychologist or some sort of librarian. <laughs> a white hot sexual <laughs> librarian. Uh, uh, yeah, sexy male librarian. Uh, I'd be a veterinarian, probably. I'd love to be a chef. That would be fun, I think. Oh, yeah. A chef. Yeah. I, can I also say, I would I love so. to do your job. Yeah. I oh, yeah, can't that'd believe be great. How Incredible, you are like You're so you have one of the greatest this. jobs in Hollywood. Like the best job in the world. And you were buddies with Johnny Carson. It doesn't yeah. get any better than that. By the way, you, you want the job? Yeah, I'll take it. You want mine? Ten million. It's yours. You smoke weed? <laughs> there he is. <laughs> thanks, to my, <laughs> thanks to my guests, Zach, Kumail, TJ, and Martin. Silicon Valley airs Sundays at 10 p.m. on HBO. And remember, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things. We'll see you next time on an allegram via the Smithson of the Wiseman. <laughs> the kaleidoscope. When you invert the window, I don't know. Good night. <laughs>